The Lake Erie Grape Discovery Center is the official visitor center for the New York State Lake Erie Concord Grape Belt Heritage Area. Supporting and promoting the grape industry, visit us and learn about grape growing history in the Lake Erie region. Shop for grapey gifts, taste local wine in a Concord vineyard. Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high quality health care to residents of Western New York offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Funding is provided by a grant from New York State Senator Catherine M. Young, representing Western New York's 57th District with a local office in Olean. Chautauqua Sunrise is made possible by a grant from Fredonia Place, a continuing care retirement community providing dignity in a modern luxury environment. Meter's Restaurant, a family tradition for over 50 years in downtown Ripley, is a proud supporter of Chautauqua Sunrise. Meter's provides all-day dining, banquet services, and custom catering, specializing in pie. From the Access Channel 5 studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Channel 5. Continuing the traditions of Senior Report, we are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Chautauqua Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week, countywide, from 9 to 10 a.m. Join us by calling in line, emailing us, or checking out our social media. And now, from the Channel 5 studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Hey, good morning everyone. I'm Doc Hamels and welcome to Chautauqua Sunrise. We've got a really awesome show in store for you. So if you have nothing to do right this minute, I know the sun's shining, you want to get to that grass. But stick around, it's going to be a really cool show. Uh, and if you have to cut the grass, I understand. You can watch us again at 2 or at 8 throughout the week. Okay, you can always check us out on YouTube where, where you store all of our shows, all 150 some of them now, and you just put in Chautauqua Sunrise and if there's a particular person or topic, you just put that right after Chautauqua Sunrise and usually it pops up for you. Okay, um, many of you already know that watch the show on a regular basis that this is a call-in show and it is 9 o'clock, 9 something, 9.03 uh, here in Mayville. And if you have a question for myself, my, our guests, if you have an announcement for your club or organization, give us a call, 753-5225, or you can uh, Twitter us, you can email us, you can go to the back door and give us a piece of paper and we'll announce whatever it is. And we have a few of those announcements here in a little bit. I also want to say good afternoon to our friends at WRFA 107.9, low power to the people. Uh, you could be listening to us Tuesday at one o'clock and we're so glad you could join us in uh, listening in to the show today. Uh, again, I promise you this is going to be a lot of fun and you're going to find it pretty cool and interesting. Okay, as always, I'd like to get right off the, uh, to the bat to uh, share some things with you from around the county. And uh, so I'm just going to dig right in. I don't have a lot to talk about for myself this morning. And uh, we're going to go to Jamestown right off the bat. We're going to start out with our friends from Infinity, as we often do. All right. This is today. They are, they are having their annual spring showcase. Infinity's annual spring showcase is sponsored by the Schultz Auto Group and will be taking place at the Jamestown High School Auditorium today at 7 p.m. The performance will feature a number of solo and duo acts as well as performances by Infinity student ensembles. Pre-sale tickets are still uh, available. You can go on their website or you can go uh, buy them at the door. Children under 18, free of charge. Also, New student orientation intake session. Music, art, dance, and theater students of all levels are welcome to enroll in either private or group lessons. 
The Invi uh, Infinity Visual and Performing Arts Center will hold a new story student orientation intake on Thursday, June 22. I guess school is probably out by that point. Uh, please contact the Infinity Center at 664-0991 to register for a session and reserve your spot today. Students may register online as well at infinityperformingarts.org. Uh, let's see. And then they'll contact you for an orientation slot. Let's see, what else does it say here? The orientation is 30 minutes, and they include the tour of the, the, the new digs down there on 2nd Street, Infinity Center. It's a fabulous uh, venue. And then you get to meet some of the staff and, uh, and look at some of their lessons and what they have to offer in different instruments. they got just about everything down there. It's really cool. 14th Annual Local Music Showcase. This is something I've been part of for the last probably five or six years. I've lost track. <coughs> this is really cool because it's an annual event that raises funds to support uh, music and arts uh, instruction at the Infinity and Visual Performing Arts. And it's held in downtown Jamestown on September 9th. We're telling you early because they're looking for bands or duets or soloists uh, to fill in the evening's um, schedule. And I forgot how many, I think it's like 15, a dozen different local venues that uh, will provide space for the evening and musicians set up. Usually we do like a 45 minute set and then people pay one money, $10 I believe, it could be more this year, I don't know. You get a wristband and you can go from venue to venue to venue all over Jamestown and you can listen to all kinds of music. There's country, bluegrass, heavy metal, headbanger music, uh, stuff like I do, acoustic rock and so on. So I mean there's something for everybody and it's just a, a really fun evening and that's September 9th so keep that uh, on your calendars. Okay, uh, the Great Discovery Center wants people to know that they're looking for uh, volunteers, especially during the spring, summer and fall sessions. And if you're interested, give them a con or contact them, Christina McCain, over there at 326-2003. And once again, we're happy that uh, the Great Discovery Center is one of our new underwriters. And uh, if you haven't been there, check it out. It's just really a lot of fun. It's a great um, place to go if you are thinking of something to do with the kids or, the, or just for your own learning experience. Uh, the Great Discovery Center has a lot of good exhibits and it's very professionally done. And I think you'll enjoy it there. All right, let's see here. Speaking of the Great Discovery Center, next Saturday, June 17th, noon to 5, they are having their second annual Cruise In Chicken Barbecue and Fundraiser. All right, the afternoon features Cruise In by the Lakeshore Street Rods Association. Uh, other cars and clubs are welcome. Dash plaques for the first 100 uh, cars, awards up to 10 cars, chicken barbecue, pulled pork, and a whole lot of other stuff is being offered. Southern Tier Distilling Company, spirit sampling, wine from Lake Erie Wine Country, craft beer, cider, wine slushies, a whole bunch of other types of things are available. Music by The Freeze from noon to 3 p.m. And yours, Julie, will be performing from 3.30 to 5. And this is outdoors. It's a lot of fun. It's a great day. I played there last year. They're going to have door prizes and 50-50 um, raffle. And if you're interested in being a vendor, $10 a table. And again, give Christina McCain a call at 326-2003. Okay, let's take our trip up to Dunkirk. The uh, Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation uh, still has grants and scholarships available. And if you have someone in your family that is thinking about going on to higher education, whether it's a two-year program, a four-year program, a certificate program, whatever, you would be surprised all the different scholarships and opportunities they have for folks going on to, uh, to, to the next step in their education. And um, a lot of times that money's not given away because nobody applies for it. So check them out. They also want you to know that the, the, let me get this straight, their annual meeting is being held on June 19th at 4 p.m. The meeting will take place at the JCC Training and Conference Facility at Bennett Road in Dunkirk. Okay, why is this important? Because they're going to highlight all the good things they did in 2016 uh, and the exciting activities that took place, their celebration of their 30th anniversary last year and so on. Among other business to be conducted <clears throat> is the election of new board and voting members. Following the business meeting, um, the foundation will be awarding the George B. Weaver Jr. Footprints Award to James and Marcia Marins of Fredonia. The award honors those who have left footprints in the community f for others to follow in the areas of philanthropy and service. 
The meeting will conclude with a um, catered reception. Everyone in the community is encouraged to come to the meeting and to stay to mingle. If you're interested in, in attending, please contact them at 366-4892. Okay. Uh, before I move on to the next one, I've, I've inserted one of my own uh, little notes here that our uh, studio director, Chuck Kelsey, sent me an email late last night and asked me to let people know, and this is coming up, so we'll announce it a couple other times, on June 29th at 8 p.m. on WQLN, you're going to hear Our Town Stories. It's a special uh, feature program that's going to be discussing stories from Mayville and Westfield uh, by various storytellers from each of those communities. So again, check in uh, with WQLN on June 29th at 8 p.m. All right, let's keep on going. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Oh, this is a good one. This is going on right this minute. All right, the 9th New York Cavalry Encampment in Moore Park. Um, we had John Wolf on here not too long ago. This is all being staged right around the McClurg Mansion, which goes back to the early 1800s. Lots of history there. Members of the 9th Cavalry will set up camp on late after... Hmm. I don't write this stuff. We'll set up camp late this afternoon, early evening on Friday. They already did. This is all passe here. They're, all, they're already set up. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Events will cool include drills and demonstrations, battle reenactments, watch the guys shoot each other, and they drop dead for about two seconds, and they pop up again miraculously, and they start all over again. Craft demonstrations for children, candlelight tours, and much, much more. In addition to the cavalry, which is hosting the event, other reenactment groups will, will also be on hand. The very popular letter reading program will return once again this year with members of the 9th Cavalry and other invited guests reading aloud letters that were written by area soldiers while serving during the Civil War. The reading, which is free and open to the public, will take place today, June 10, at 2 p.m. inside St. Peter's Episcopal Church located next to the park. Also taking place tomorrow, Sunday, June 11, will be authentic Civil War service with sermons, selected hymns, and other related activities patterned after what service would have been like had it taken place in the church during the Civil War. Uh, the Civil War service will begin at 10 a.m. and all members of the public are welcome to attend. Whew. The encampment weekend will continue through Sunday uh, with the groups departing tomorrow afternoon. The encampment, along with all the other related events, is free and open to the public. And additionally, this evening, uh, they're having their big fundraiser, Gala. The Chautauqua County Historical Society is going to be hosting this year's uh, gala once again from 6 to 8 p.m. at the McClurg. Cost is $50 a person, and all proceeds benefiting the Historical Society. Okay, for more information, give them a call at 326-2977. Uh, my buddies uh, Sue Tillotson and Jim Cunningham will be playing there this evening. Uh, I've played there for about the last five years. It's a great event, and if you like history, if you like feeling what it's like to be in the old... Um, Days of the Civil War, check it out. You get a really cool vibe well, when you have the cavalry walking in with their, their uniforms and their, their hoop dresses and all that sort of thing, and they're out on the grounds in their tents cooking and everything. So it's a lot of fun. Bring the kids. Fourth annual Ella Rinkert Memorial Golf Tournament is going to be held next Saturday, June 17th, and this is being organized by the Chautauqua Lake Child Care Center and the benef it benefits the scholarship fund for the, the Child Care Center, and that's Beth Starks and Company, and it's going to be held at Chautauqua Golf Club, Chautauqua, New York. And for more information, give them a call at Chautauqua Lake Central School, ask for Beth Starks or the uh, Child Care Center, and they can provide you even further information. My buddy, Marianne Spanos, she sent me something uh, late last night as well. I was getting all this stuff during the night. 35th annual anniversary Yasu Festival, Father's Day weekend, Friday and Saturday, next weekend, June 16th and 17th, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., under the Big Tent, over at St. Nicholas's Greek Orthodox Church, uh, Mount Vernon Place, and Francis Streets in Jamestown, rain or shine, live bazooki music. Bazooki is a type of long neck uh, mandolin. I play a bazooki, but I play the Irish version. Uh, live bazooki music and dancing, church, uh, church tours, traditional Greek food and pastries. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I'm just thinking about good Greek food. Uh, there's a boutique there. The 
Oh boy, oh boy. It says, play tea for kids. I'm not sure what that means. And George's famous Greek hot dogs. I wonder if that's George Spanos. Uh, admission $2, children under 12 are free. And let's see, what else we got? Christmas in July, Toys for Tots will be held July 29th. This is one of those, mark your calendar from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Resource Center's administration office building uh, will host that. Vendors are wanted. Eight foot tables available for $25, double space for $40. Vendors required to contribute item for Chinese auction. All money benefits Toys for Tots helping 2,400 children in our community. Hmm. For more information, give Evelyn Wright Kegelmeyer a call at 661-1429. Okay, and just a couple last notes and then we're going to go to a public service announcement. Um, we talk about this from time to time. The four of us from the studio here are going to be doing the Ride for Roswell two weeks from today. R Randy, you and I will be somewhere on the Peace Bridge by now, hopefully. Canada. We'll be in Canada by now. All right, um, and just a reminder, if anyone is interested in donating to any of our rides, you can just use our last names, Bert, Zook, or Hamels. You look, up, look us up on Ride for Roswell and you can donate and we're, we'll be happy to represent you during that. And um, I want to give a shout out to uh, my buddies from 10,000 Maniacs. I don't know if you guys know this, but they are on their 30th anniversary in my tribe tour. And they're down in South America. They're all over the United States. And I just thought that was pretty darn cool. Uh, we don't hear a lot about these things sometimes because it's like the old thing. You don't know what's going on in your own backyard. But uh, these guys are, are carrying the, the torch for, for our county, for themselves, and great music. And congratulations, guys, Dennis and Steve and the rest of the band. Um, well done. And then tonight, musically speaking, I'll be performing with my partner, uh, Will Russell, at Webb's Captain Table from 930 to 1230. So come on out here in Mayville, join us. All right, enough of that. Woo! We're going to take a public service announcement. Stay tuned. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. And we're back. Hey folks, uh, returning uh, from October, we had a Halloween show here, and we were featuring folks from the Jamestown Paranormal Investigators. I got that right? Right. I got that right. Yeah, that I have right. to write these things down because I do forget it. <laughs> JPI for short. And Mike Polero has joined us again. And he brought Hope Hill as part of the team as well. And good morning and welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. You're very welcome. Well, our, our grand plan didn't quite work out. We were going to uh, drag Randy and me <clears throat> and anybody else from the studio to uh, an investigation. We just didn't pull it off. But well, maybe down the road we'll do something. We will. Okay, we'll have some fun with that. So, uh, Mike, uh, nonetheless, we talked, and as you know, if we talk about a topic and there seems to be a lot of interest around it, which there is on this one, um, we'd like to drill down a little deeper into the topic of the paranormal. Um, and so, what I'd like to do is, is continue that discussion. I, I looked at our show from back in October of last year, and I raised a few more questions that I might have. And of course, talking to people after the show, and I'm sure they have some questions. So remember folks, if you have a question, uh, give us a call at 753-5225, and we'll uh, take your call, hopefully, but be nice. Okay, Mike, you are the, the head of this, this project, right? The founder? Uh, founder, yes. Why did you found JPI? Um, JPI was actually <coughs> a third group that I had. Started out years ago in 2006, I want to say, when we just got a couple guys together. Um, JPI came in 2010, a bunch of guys and I just put one together and mm -hmm. here we are. Um, there's, <coughs> so much, there's so much going on in Chautauqua County, you know. Um, I, we lived in a house that was kind of, I, I talked about this before, that was kind of haunted, I suppose, if you want to say that. That's what got me, got me into this. Mm -hmm. But um, I was with a group, 
um, East Coast Paranormal Society. Okay. Um, we were doing very good, and things just people started leaving. You know? Drifting, yeah, going yeah, around. Go it's, on like, on it's like a band. band. You, you right. Can only keep right. a band together so long. That's right. You know. Um, so we just left, and my buddies called me up and wanted to start another group and wanted me to, you know, help them out. And here we are. Did you learn anything over those years? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Learned a little bit, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You had a little more experience at that. So you said you lived in a haunted house. Like, what was going on in that house? Uh, We lived in a downstairs apartment, and you could hear people upstairs walking at nighttime. Um, Obviously, there's there's nobody upstairs. People walking around, doors closing, and it just kind of, you know, kind of caught my interest. So I asked the landlord one time, you know, what was going on, you know, what... And he said, well, story is my uncle hung himself in the attic and he never left, you know. So that's what got me into it. And, and he's not paying any rent. He's not paying nothing, <laughs> you know. But he doesn't take anything either. He don't eat nothing. So I figured, you know, it's all good, you know. Okay. He'd pick up a lawnmower once in a while, but he didn't do that mm-hmm. either. But um, it was just, that's what got me into it. Okay. I always thought there was something else out there. Okay. You know? So... Here I am. All right. So let's hold that for a minute. And yeah. Let's uh, officially welcome Hope to the show. And Hope, how did you get involved with uh, the paranormal? Um, just in general or with the team? Just in general. Whichever direction you want to take that question. I was eight, and I saw my first spirit. And it kind of intrigued me but scared me a little bit. And then I started seeing more things. And... Stuff just kept happening, hearing things, seeing things, sensing things, and mm-hmm. I just started doing reading and research on it, and it kind of developed from there. So. And um, we, we talked about this before we went on the air, is that, to me personally, talking about the paranormal is like the 8,000-pound gorilla in the room that nobody wants to talk about. They know it's there. They reference it. They'll say, oh, yeah, your grandmother had the gift, or your yeah. uncle had the eye, or, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. And then it's done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True? Yes. True. Why is that? And yet, when you look at statistics, they say, like, 80% of, of, of people that were, that were um, yeah, questioned, or like Gallup poll type things, interviewed, they said that 80% of the people believe in ghosts or other entities but yet they don't talk about it well, honestly eh, i think um religion plays a little bit with that mm-hmm. because people that are religious don't want to believe in spirits the paranormal why um because they believe that you cross over you go to heaven that's mm-hmm. where you go and i, I believe I, yeah. that it's all demon yeah a lot of people believe that it's demon. demonic oh okay <laughs> they see it as a negative as opposed yeah. to yeah yeah Okay. And there's a difference between oh, dynamic and paranormal a activity. There's a lot of difference and yeah. a lot of different things. Okay. So it's kind of like what what filter you're looking at this through. Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah, and religion obviously shapes a lot of our lives and, and uh, kind of gives us a framework. And sometimes it's it, it's congruent with what we think and other times it's in, in, in contrast. So how do, you, how do you work that? I mean, is that an issue for you guys? Hey, that's true for me. No, I'm just, I'm starting to, as of the last couple of years, get more comfortable with this Mm -hmm. and talking about it. There's a place for it. A lot of people don't know Mm -hmm. that I'm on the JPI team. A lot of people don't know that I, you know, people will tease and say, well, you see dead things. Well, (laughs) a lot of people don't know that about me. Um, So I'm just finally starting to get comfortable with myself that this is just who I am as part Mm -hmm. of me. Um, I bring it up, you know, at times if someone has a question, but I, you know, if I'm sitting at church, I'm not going to jump into, mm-hmm. you know, the fact that I was just at a, on an investigation the night before. <laughs> People, um, they know yeah. me all the time. I mean, they know who I am yeah. for the last, you know, so many You've years. You've been more of a public figure in that Pretty area. much, you know. My wife sometimes just mad at me, though, you know, because people stop me in Walmart, you know, and, oh, you're the ghost guy. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, it doesn't really bother me. I mean... People are going to think of something about somebody, no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, if you believe in ghosts, or if uh, you know, oh, you're a guitar player. Well, you should have been a drummer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or it, it's just everybody's going to have something. Right. You know. Yeah. Something. Someone's there. got a, a comment to make. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where was I going to go with that? So, as far as re- religion, we'll just maybe brush brush along a little bit more. But you know, um, 
I've studied a variety of things in college and things like that, various religions of the world and things like that. There seems to be a place for, for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether you talk about <clears throat> resurrection, you talk about going to other worlds, the heavens, or, you know, talk about purgatory, limbo, hell. I mean, <clears throat> these, are, these are places that they talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was laughing a little bit because uh, to, to myself on my way over here, and I, I share that with you, is I remember, you know, you always talk about the Holy Ghost. Well, ghost, you know, I, I, I hadn't really thought about it when I was growing up. And then they changed the term to Holy Spirit, which has a little different connotation. But, um, but it's, it's always been right there. It's Amen. right there, and nobody wanted to talk about it. And that's just so interesting. You, you read the holy books. I don't care what, what religion is. There's references to things like this, you know, right, right. coming back from the dead or doing this or whatever. So, um, so we're going we're gonna to be open about that, okay? Yeah. We're going to talk about it straight up today. Okay. So um, you do investigations. That's part of your, your, your name. Why would anybody do an investigation of anything? Why just leave it alone? That's what my wife asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, <laughs> what do you do? You stir in the pot. He goes, just leave it alone, you know. And it does stir the pot because mm, when you do an does. investigation, you're inviting, you're inviting contact with them, and a lot of people don't realize that. So, a lot of times people call and say, "Hey." I got something going on in my house, so we'll go to their house and we will talk with them. Because what we like to do is we like to meet with them first. Hope and I will go. Because it's a lot easier if, um, well, I don't want to say easier, but better if they would meet somebody before the actual investigation, having mm. four people coming in your house that you don't know. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> but we tell them that, look, you know, they know we're here now. Mm -hmm. They know we're coming. You sort back. of introduced yourself to everybody in the house. Pretty much, it could act up or it can sit back. It all depends, you know. But it knows we're coming now. You know, you you, you kind of said something earlier about demons and things like that, and and it seems to me that most people that talk about these things seem to have a negative connotation about spirit. Are all spirits negative? No, no. no. Okay, but some are. Spirits aren't it's not the spirit. a negative energy. A spirit is, um, for example, um, when your loved ones pass away, they can become a spirit if they would follow the light and go into the next realm. All right, um, wherever that is, wherever that is, it could be heaven, it could be here, wherever it is. Because each religion sort of has their own next realm. Type. Pretty much, right. yeah. Um, now that spirit can come back as many times as it wants to, wherever it wants to. Okay. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Remember I told you, I'm going to hold you every time you say something. That's so okay. coming back to where? What do we where it wants to come back to. Are say, we talking um, reincarnation say, here? No, 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 no. I'm talking about as right. spirit-wise. Oh, so coming back to the house. You might yeah. smell like the per your grandmother might have worn this certain perfume and you would smell the perfume. Gotcha. Um, they're able to come back and visit and check on us. Oh, say. good uh, Lord. A ghost? <laughs> well, they always see us. I don't really check it out, Bobby. Hear us. <laughs> a ghost now. We're done here. <laughs> is something that's stuck here. Yeah. They can't. Why? Because it didn't take us on. Um, it did not move on to the next pain. Many reasons. See, now, um, yeah, it could be a many reasons. Um, well, give me a couple. Okay. Um, murder. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to leave my family. Oh. I don't want to do that. Attachment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, as longer... The longer this ghost stays into your home, mm -hmm. it can be bad on your health as well. Mm -hmm. It can drain you. You know, um, you, you don't want that to happen. You don't want anything to linger. You know, it has to move on. Okay. You know, moving on. Oh, you were saying something. Um, oh, going off what Mike is saying, it may not want to cross over. It might feel that it's going to be judged, that God won't accept it, you know, him or her into the gates of heaven. Mm -hmm. So it's not afraid worthy. to pass over. Right. So it's afraid to cross over. Sounds like, and what I'm hearing, maybe some unfinished business, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Very much. Maybe they died unexpectedly, and they, do they, do they know they're dead? Sometimes. Some. Not and all others, the time. They don't know they're dead? There's different types of hauntings, so... <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, let's talk they about They could be running around through their, um, their past life and thinking that everything is the way it is, you know? I mean... Like an imprint. They do, uh -huh. they're, they're like... Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's it could residual. be like... I don't want to say it's like a, a residual... No, because residual. Because residual um, is just there, you know. And it doesn't interact. It's, it's just, just implanted into something at a certain at time, time, you know, so like, like a, an anniversary type. So deal. it might be like uh, 
Sunday afternoon, every Sunday afternoon, so, something might just walk by because it's a. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's like an old it's, memory type yeah. thing. Very well, like a tape recorder. It okay. doesn't know you're there. It are will these, never interact you, with you. Are these common? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. okay. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll go back to your question about demons. I believe demons were never a living soul. Okay. Demons came from, now let's use the word, um, Satan. Um, can I say hell here? Just did. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're good then, huh? Um, I think a demon is. I've been to hell. Something. Have you? Yeah, in the Cayman Islands, there's a little town called Hell. <laughs> it's nice. like, Welcome to hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my passport, so I, I understand hell. Yes. Yeah, good. So um, Satan. Yes. I think it's. Uh, I think a demon has never been a um, a person at one time. I think it was just formed from hell. All right. So it's an entity from a different realm. Energy. I do believe so. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, how does it get here? Like yeah, I know these are tough here. questions, but how does it get here? Did we? I don't know that. Um, it's Satan. Okay. Um, God, I, I don't know now even how spirits would even get here because nobody ever, not one spirit has ever told me how it got here from wherever, mm -hmm. but God lets it so come like, down. Like a parallel universe type thing? Like a poor hole? Well, light and dark. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, there, you can't have light without darkness. You can't have the darkness without the light. Right. They kind of coexist with each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, the world started out dark until... God lit it up. So you have, you know, they coexist together, and I think that's, you know, kind of why and how it's here. I mean, because it exists, it always exists. Okay. But you have to learn to keep the darkness at bay, and a lot of people fight inner demons mm -hmm. and try to keep that part of them at bay, you know? So I think oh, I it's just always existed. It's an so energy. So what you feel it's is that there's, there's, it's just the other side of what we see. Yeah. More or less. Mm -hmm. you, you said something about portal. I You see this on TV all the time. You've opened the portal to something. Is that reality? I mean, is that really happening? It just means you've opened like a, a channel to communicate with them. Door and they're um, able to communicate. Portal, portal, like, roll, have you, know, you ever dealt with these portals? Um, I've never dealt with a porthole. Mm -hmm. No. No. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we don't use Ouija boards, so we don't open nothing. Right. Mm -mm. Um, what, our, what we do is we go in... I don't have a recorder here, but we go in and we record. Here's a, a recorder, just a regular recorder. Okay. All right. Um, it's like a tape recorder. It, pretty much, yeah. Um, a little bit advanced. Though. A little advanced, yeah. <laughs> it picks up the, um, the dead voices instead of light voices. No, that's dead not voices. Can <laughs> okay, we do a little close up? This is, this does look like any recorder I've ever used. No. It looks like something like that, like you use for testing oxygen or something. That's, right. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So, so what we'll do is we will sit in the um, somewhere in the home or building, wherever whoever calls us, and we will ask questions and we will run this. And then when we're done at the end of the night, we will go obviously go home, but we will listen to it and we will find out what we catch. There's a lot of times that you will catch things on here that you do not hear with your ears. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, just because it's more advanced to catch the lower elms than our ears can. We can't catch everything. Okay. As being a musician, you know that. I can hardly hear anything now <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a musician. But um, that will catch the right. voices. Okay. Um, so it's a different frequency type thing. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. I had never thought yeah. of it that way. And a lot of people say, well, ask who it is or why it's here. We do ask these questions. Why are you here? Is there a message that we need to give to somebody? Mm -hmm. um, I always like to um, ask, well, what year is this? Uh -huh. I need to know what year this is. Did they ever tell you? I have not got a year. Did we get a year? Yeah, we, we did. We did get a year once. At the Lenhart. Yep. Was that current year or they were That living? was just, oh. Um, I don't remember the year, but mm -hmm. it was. I can't remember the year. It wasn't but, current. Okay. That, that's what I mean. Yeah. 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 But um, why are you here? Message, year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because people ask me, how come when we see somebody, when we see a, um, a spirit in our house, it's dressed in the 1800s? How come it's dressed like that? Well, what do you want it to be dressed like? <laughs> you want it to be dressed Go in to your clothes? closet, put on some Speedos or something? You know, if it passed away in the 1800s, right. it's going to be living in the 1800s. Okay. It's not living in the 2017. Mm -hmm. It's still living in the 1800s. Um, that's for you know, common right. sense, yeah. A movie that really depicts this very well is the movie The Others. Oh. With Nicole Kidman, mm -hmm. um, I had chills the whole time. I, did you see that? I, I was watching that. the movie, and she's living in the house with her children, and these events are happening, and she's feeling that you know there's paranormal activity there. The spirit or the ghosts won't go away, and she's really struggling with it. Well, here to come to find out at the end of the movie, the catch is her and her children 
are the ghost. Oh. And the people living there yeah, so like the sixth are the sense, with something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're 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 and it's a really good movie. Like it really captures the paranormal very well, mm. and and what it's about, and what so they think, and how they feel. No, I don't have to watch the movie. Thanks. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, you know, it's been out for so many years. So if uh, you haven't seen it yet. And going back to yeah. DVP. DVP electric. What, electric DVP? voice phenomenon. Okay. If you want a movie that will tie it out to this, it's called White Noise. Oh, okay. yeah. Guy records, I think it's his dad or something like that. He records his, um, on the EVP. So you, that's a really good movie to watch if you're interested in you know, more about the. Okay, now I, I think we need to put a, a precautionary note here right now. So somebody that's watching the show right now, uh, they might say, I'm going to go out and get one of those. To me, this could be really habit forming. This could be something that could it be is. an unhealthy <laughs> thing. True or false? <laughs> Oh, very it, true. We love very what true. we do. <laughs> so no, what I mean, we do, but I mean, it's a somebody got yeah. one, and and they spent all their time trying to communicate, and they're getting absorbed in this whole realm. They kind of, I mean, this could be an unhealthy. They thing. need to understand what they're getting into to begin with. It's not fun. It's well, it is fun for us, but we understand it. We research it. Okay. You know, we know what we're going into. There are some people that get into it that have no idea what they're getting into, and they're doing it oh, just because it's fun and they want to hang out with some friends and do this. Mm -hmm. You can't do it for that reason. I right. mean. It's, you have to respect the people that are no longer with us, and that's what it is. We go into a place and we respect the fact that there's entities with us. And it's a very dangerous thing. People yeah. don't understand that. They think it's, oh, yeah, let's go in. You know, like you have an event with somebody. We try to have an event, you know, and bring in guests and stuff like that. But we try to bring them in to places that we've already been that we know was pretty mm -hmm. much there. Safe and not harmful. But it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not just a game where you go out, oh, I got a bunch of toys. We're going to play around with battery-operated toys mm -hmm. in the dark. No, we don't. It's not like that because you asked, you can bring something home. You can bring something very okay, bad. Okay, and I home. said, and I said to you, what is the something? <laughs> well, the energy something could be the an energy of what is left in that place. If it attaches itself to you for some reason because you wear cologne that it's used to, or mm -hmm. it just feels a a comfortable connection to you, you can bring the energy home. Is the energy good or bad? I don't know that, but you will find out as soon as you bring it home. Objects too, though. Um, objects. My grandmother used to home. go to household sales all the time, and she would bring stuff home. And uh, unfortunately, I never kept it, though. I always, you know, <laughs> redonated it <laughs> back <laughs> because you can bring the energy of the person that's connected to that item. Any old jewelry boxes, jewelry, um, old hutches, dishes, uh, anything they could be connected to in their living life, they're still kind of connected to it when they've passed on. If it's Within very reason, special, if it's special to them, and mm -hmm. you can bring that into the house. And then you'll start having activity. Mm -hmm. So very cautious about that too. <laughs> See now that brings just K two meter in. K two, mm -hmm. all right. K two, K nine, K two. All right. All right. What's this K2? is this here is an EMF meter. It um, detects EMF fields, which EMF is another porn for energy. So there might be a little bit in this room, huh? Oh, I'm thinking you might <laughs> have well, a lot quite of a bit in this little room. Yeah. <laughs> but if, for example, somebody will say, "Well, I see something next to this hutch all the time," it just surrounds this area. Take the K2, turn it on, put it on there. If the lights let up, then it will indicate to us that there is some kind of energy located around. K2, all right. But with the EMF, too, um, we've had people say that, you know, we're lightheaded, we, I don't feel good, I feel very nauseous. Mm -hmm. um, from my understanding, if wires aren't grounded, or I don't know the scientific backing behind this, mm -hmm. but it can, um, it's a health risk. EMF can make people very sick. It can I'm make very you sick. They call see it uh, something like a something cage where you're... Fear cage. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm showing the... And an investigation. Oh, I'm always backwards on this. Thing. So, so if this lights up pretty high, then there's, there's a lot of this a lot energy. Of energy. Mm -hmm. And so what you're saying is you're exposing yourself to that. Yeah. Right. And it can make you very sick. And we went into a place, um, investigation. Is that right now? Yeah. It will shut off by itself. Okay. We were on an investigation, and the, our client kept saying, you know, I feel really nauseous over here. I feel like I'm seeing things a little, you know, not don't feel very well. But the EMF reading in her area, it, it was very high. It was over the 20s. So it could be, I, I don't, like I said, I don't know the backing behind it or, or, you know, why it is, but it could be maybe the wiring. I can, I can help you with or, that. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> it's electromagnetic 
mm -hmm. stuff that's coming out. And that's why you, a lot of times people have to be very careful that they don't build their houses like under these power lines. Yes, thank okay? you. Okay, yep. And yep. because it will affect you. Exactly. Emotionally mm -hmm. or it's a physical reaction mm -hmm. to, to, to that energy. Right. And, and, and I think sometimes people do get nauseous from those things and mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we happens. did an um, investigation when JPI first was formed. Um, a buddy of mine, James Reed. You know James Reed? Radio. Yeah, he TV was on there. Yes, oh, he was yeah. the dance program. Yeah, James Reed was with me. Um, we did a lady's um, house, and she said that she was seeing things, and she can't sleep at night, and she gets the itching feelings that people are touching her. And come to find out, she was sleeping on a, um, an old hospital electrical bed. And the uh, EMF fuel was just like off the hook. So it's not necessarily paranormal, it's something like right. electrical, physical. JPI wants to go into your house and tell you you have something wrong, not that you have living guests. So we don't want to tell you. Debunking. Debunk it. We want to debunk do that. Yeah. We don't want to go and tell somebody your house is haunted. No. You know? Um, I would rather find a, a reasonable explanation for it. All right. you know? Are you trying to prove that there's life after death? Absolutely. Always. Always trying to prove it. And pe people buy that or they don't buy it? Some. Some. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Some people can be pretty strong willed. Pretty nasty and about it and pretty yeah. What's the issue about, about it, do you think? What, what's that? They're afraid of the idea or? Religion. Well, maybe. Some they people, might be. Yeah. They're going back to your religious mm -hmm. beliefs. Sure. Yep. Um, some might just be my dad. He Some's didn't believe dad. in none of it. <laughs> none of it. He didn't believe in any of it. He was never religious. So he well, just never believed. Well, you have one life to lead, and once you're dead, you're dead, and it's over with. You know, and they put you in a pine box, and they send you away, and that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how my dad felt. Mm -hmm. But he never seen anything. He never, oh, as long as I know, he said he never seen anything. But he never believed in that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a lot of different reasons. People are afraid of it. People don't want to be called goofy, <laughs> <laughs> like we're always called. We're <laughs> you know, <it's> but <laughs> you know. You um, you used the term that really sparked my concern, and it was Ouija board. Mm -hmm. um, I have seen these for sale. I have known people that will have a party, and they get drunk, and they start messing with these Ouija boards. I have seen nothing good come from a Ouija board. Mm -hmm. So what's your, what's your advice or, or mm -hmm. comment on Ouija boards? The whole Ouija board idea, um, different thing information that I have read that I've looked into, said the person that created it, which it's been so many years now since I've yeah, even researched it, but the person that created it was a very negative person, mm -hmm. so it kind of was created negatively, okay. um, but it's a way to connect with people that have passed on, but unfortunately that's where demons come into play, and they can take on any shape or any person we want them to. So there, you don't know who you're communicating with it. And there have been a lot of horror stories about the Ouija board and things that can happen. We don't use the Ouija board just because it is a darker, mm -hmm. it's darker and w that's not where we're going with this. And plus we don't know who we're inviting in. So you like, you're, with the Ouija to. board, you're like opening the door. Yeah, and yeah. Anything can come or go, right? Mm -hmm. And you, and if you, you can't can filter it. it. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, the Again, correctly. that portal type thing. So let's say you do come to a situation where you get all this energy. Do you bring in priests or rabbis or? or it hasn't been that negative yet. Or I mean, my past year with you guys. I haven't before. been into anything where I couldn't handle my own. Okay. Um, people ask, can you cleanse the house for me? Yeah, well, we can cleanse it for you, but what's it going to do? It ain't going to do you any good. You know, I mean, it's only cleansing only lasts for. So long. You have to do you it. Know, you got to keep constantly mm -hmm. cleansing. I mean, I did not know that. I thought yeah. it, on you TV it's one one shot no, deal. No, you can't sage once. <laughs> you can't just sage once. Sage and when it gone. No. It's like Mr. Clean. No. You're done. And no, no, no you got to keep cleansing. So you got to invest in the old sage brush. Right, so what? So what do you do? You just well, basically, you just say the you know you have to say we. My buddy and I we used to do it a couple of times. Um, we were in Indiana one time and we cleansed the house. We would just burn the sage and he would walk around and he would say the Lord's Prayer. Okay. But the thing is, you have to do it the correct way. You just can't walk through the house and <laughs> throw dust and say, get out, you know, because it doesn't work that way. You have to start from the top of your house and you got to hit every so window. So it's a process the whole thing. Yeah, and you got to have somebody when you're accessing it, you know, you're walking down, somebody's behind you closing all the doors and the windows and keeping it out, you know. You have to make sure you do all that because you leave one door, one window open. You know you have to be precise about it, and then it doesn't last forever anyway. It's only good for a while. So it's sort of like it's a 
kind of like a irritant to the spirit. Just Pretty stay much, away yeah. when it dissipates. Oh, we're back. Like an incense. You burn an incense, you smell it until it's gone. Hmm. This is why pe some people don't like what we do. Or they think that we don't know what we're talking about because not everybody sages the same way. Mm -hmm. Not everybody investigates the same way. <coughs> everybody has saging? their own thought oh and opinion. Gosh. Yes, there are different ways to different cleanse a house. Is, yeah. <laughs> and people that feel that their way is right don't ever want to hear our side of, you know, of what we see or have. Am I doing it the so. correct way? I don't know if I'm doing it the correct way. The other lady over there that's using um, you know, quartz and stuff like that. She's thinking she's doing it the right way. So is there a right way? Like somebody would say, oh, Jason, I met Jason Haas the other day. What a professional. Nobody's a professional in this kind of field because yeah. you're always learning something. So mm -hmm. when somebody comes up and says, oh, I'm a professional in this, no, you're not. You know? I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm not a professional at it. I'm always learning something different. You know? So in, in, in my world, okay, we got a phone call. So I'll come back to that. Good morning, caller. Oh, hi. Good morning. This is Linda. It's so good to see your guests on talking about the paranormal and uh, different uh, extrasensory perceptions. There you go. So, uh, you live in a very old world. <laughs> is they have ghost tours and stuff there, don't they? they should talk I don't about think so. Not to my knowledge. Oh. Well, maybe we should. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Lilydale, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, I thought maybe at Chautauqua they did. I didn't know. I, I don't, they might. I don't know. No? I, I don't know that's about true. that. Um, I, I found something very interesting uh, that was being discussed about uh, energy that's left behind mm -hmm. with an object after the object left. About 30 years ago, they had a, it was a documentary on uh, energy, atomic energy, and mm -hmm. what happens. Mm-hmm. And all living things, even plants, have energy. Sure. And when that, even a plant, leaves the area, the, the, the atoms or the energy is left behind. It's called an aura. Oh, sure. Yep. Yeah. That yep. makes sense. And uh, that, that's quite interesting, I think. Hmm. And that even plants do it. Yep. Any living thing. All right. Absolutely. Well. Every living thing has ah. energy. We haven't even talked about auras, have we? <laughs> well, thanks, Lynn, for that. All right. So, so what's new in your world? Well, we're still recruiting people for positions with the Senior Employment Program, and uh, we have our computer training going on, of course, in Brockton and Westfield, and um, it's a great opportunity for people. There are also other services with the Office for the Aging and our phone number, I my TV is blinking. I don't know if it's paranormal or what. Ghost <laughs> <laughs> <Close> tour. <laughs> but uh, it's up. We've got it for you. <laughs> it's seven five three four four seven one. It's like the telephone here. Woo. Okay, it's right there, folks. All right, seven five three four. Just one bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I I goofed up the phone call last week uh, for Marianne, so it's seven five three four four seven one. Right. Okay. And so when they call uh, call that number, who they talk to? They should ask for Linda. Okay. And for the senior employment program. Super. Or if they need other services like uh, saging. Uh, right. <laughs> 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 I we do have somebody in the office that might be interested in helping with that. There you go. <laughs> I, we we recruit people all the time for our office. <laughs> but there are other services like if people want information about their health insurance okay. or if they have a situation with like with New York Connect if they need help with somebody if they're a caregiver there's a there's multitude of services we have wellness programs um, there's, there's lots of things going on at our office okay great all right thanks and uh, the weather looks promising for the weekend Lynn it does it looks beautiful all right well you enjoy the weekend and as always thanks for calling in and letting us know what's going on in your world all right thank you have a great weekend and a great week <coughs> you too thanks okay. bye bye thank you all right Woo! I forgot where we were but we were talking about all kinds of cool stuff here so let me let me just ask a new question um, we talked about spirits and we talked about demons are there any other things the different type of hauntings we were talking about. Okay, hauntings. Um, the residual haunting is what my kid explained. There's also poltergeist, demonic, and um, intelligent hauntings. So okay. intelligent interact with So you. Where, where, where do you want to begin? Let's go demonic. Demonic we talked about. Yes. Evil. Poltergeist. We haven't talked about poltergeist. That's German for ghost. Noisy ghost. Noisy They're ghost. Noisy. Right. They That's move right. things. Geist they the throw ghost. things. Um, typically happens around adolescent mm -hmm. during puberty. Agent. 
So he has to have a human mm -hmm. interaction for that to happen. Kind of pulls on their energy. Is mm -hmm. this common? It is when you have a um, in an ass, you know, like a teenage girl going through her little, mm -hmm. you know, thing. puberty. Puberty. It very, <laughs> very well could be, and then you you're having little problems at home at the same time. All right, know? so some emotional appeal. Type but thing. I, you know, I've been doing a little research on a poltergeist and stuff, and um, you know, I don't even know if it's actually the living that can cause that. I mean, I think if you have a spirit in your home, that can energize um, a poltergeist too, can it not? Yeah, because it's, it's a mind. It's an energy. Yeah. So I don't think but it is. But, but poltergeist is stuff moving. Yeah. Moving, yeah. noisy. Things aggressive. moving. It's aggressive. It's aggressive. Yeah, that's the ones like when you see the movies and you got chairs on top of each other, you know, yeah. stacked on. Stuff. You ever see this one? No. You gotta go to a different, different yeah, company. I, well, I think yeah. depending on the place, I think more places can have more activity than others. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, because a lot of times it's the ground. For example, someone will say, oh, my house has activity. Well, I'll just take it down and put up a new one and they'll make a joke about it. And I kind of laugh yeah. with them, but then I'm like, well, yeah. if you build it, if, the, if it's the land that's haunted, you're going to have activity at your house still. Okay. So it doesn't matter because it's the imprint that's left on the land. So when we say it's haunted, we're really saying people lived here before. Yeah. It exactly. could be, uh, American Indians. It could have mm -hmm. been early settlers. Mm -hmm. It could have been whomever. Soldiers. Soldiers coming through all different wars. Mm -hmm. I mean, Never think know. about Chautauqua County. I mean, woo. You yeah. know, we, we go back pretty far yeah. you know, to the 1600s and yep. that. And with white man, and then of course with Native American, thousands of years and that. So right. this ground is pretty well saturated with a lot of energy. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You know, um, a lady just called in and talked about um, um, Lilydale. Lilydale wants nothing to do with any kind of ghost hunting at all. You know, you can't go in there and do a tour or something like that. So, but we tried. They don't mm -hmm. want nothing to do with it. And you know. Well, they have their own. Yeah, they got their own little click going yeah, on in there, and it's working for them. Okay. Well, yeah. and it's, uh, again, it's probably, I'm guessing, a different filter. They're, they see yeah. things through a different way than, mm -hmm. than what you're doing. And yeah. I've um, been there a few times. Mm -hmm. I've gone on their ghost walks and, mm -hmm. you know, their Monday night circles and stuff. So, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. So a poltergeist activity, demonic activity, residual activity, what was the other one? Intelligent. All right, well, they interact with you. Okay. Um, the, the, I like to say paranormal. I don't like to call them ghosts. I guess that's what they are, but I try to refrain from that. Um, you know, they interact with you. They, you you t ask a question, like with the meter here, this is also... Okay, what do you got? Why don't you hold it up? So It's the same thing. Uh, it's so just a little different. Mine has numbers on it. So okay. this is a way that I've I've only worked with it a couple times, but I use this to communicate. So with that's them. picking up the energy levels around you, magnetic, electromagnetic. Yes, yes. Okay. And I'll ask it questions, and I'll usually say like 2.0 for yes, anything, and I'll, I'll give them actual wrong. numbers. Oh, okay. I give actual numbers, and the one investigation I went on, this actually worked out fairly well. And to test it out, I ask a lot of different questions, um, just so I can make sure it's really doing what I want it to do and I'm actually communicating with an energy and it, it's worked out pretty well the one investigation we went on it used the 2.0 for yes and and Mike on your unit it would light it up certain level yeah certain levels in the green or the red so if you're here you light it up or, or whatever oh, okay. that's why I use mine <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing you know yeah you try it so it looks like it goes from green so all yeah it will go from okay. green, mm -hmm. all the way up to red. So, so if it's hitting blinks. red, you're, all those light, everything lights up, yeah. like you see on TV. Okay. See, if um something's going on, yeah, you gotta be backwards here, huh? <laughs> 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 see how it'll just yep. light up like that. Oh, there you go. Okay, very good. Um, that will tell you that normally there's, but it also could be there's um a leak in an electric wire someplace mm -hmm. or a lamp or something like that. Now you got an ovulus. Oh boy, what's there's this? There's the ovulus. That's pretty this cool. thing here is pretty obelisk. cool once you get it to work. Obelisk. 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 That's a new a one. A spirit box. Oh, is that where it makes all that white noise? No. No. Well, no, no. Oh, no, that no. one doesn't? No. Which one well, did this Sherry one here is then? what? You use the Frank box, I'm going to say? No, no you, it was a circle. And it had all it the static the white noise. And yeah, the, okay. All right, so what does this do? This here, it runs off of radio frequencies. And it picks out, they claim. Oh, all right. I know what you're like, that it's, it's randomly looking for uh, words. Uh, words. All so right, does that work pretty good? Yeah, it works okay. you got to have a speaker with it because you can't hear it without the speaker. But okay. 
Um, it works pretty good. When it does work, it works really well. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can use it with the meters and the um, EVPs. Normally, we'll put down a couple of different items, mm -hmm. put that down, we'll throw this out here, and then we'll take an EVP and we'll put it out here. And now we got three different meters going. Spirit choice. Yeah, you know. Um, why don't you come over here and put, you know, get next to the um, meter and watch it light up, okay. you know. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. If you want to talk, this hero will speak out. You say, who are you? John. Or, you know, pick out something, mm -hmm. and then that will catch everything. Okay. Hope you're ready to say something. I was skeptic. When I first um, joined the group and they pulled this out, mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I wasn't really sure what I thought of it. And I'm thinking, no, you know, because I've seen it done on TV, but I'm like, I'm not really sure. I, and one night we were doing an investigation, <laughs> and in the one room there was a mannequin. And I didn't want to see the mannequin because mm. I knew in the pure dark it was going to scare the daylights out of me, and I just didn't need that because I, I can be very jumpy. So I tried to move the mannequin, <coughs> and unfortunately she fell apart, so then I had to try to configure to put her back together. <laughs> and so I finally, Her you leg know, fell off. It was, oh. well, on her hand and oh stuff. Well, so we got her back together, and I just left her there looking out the window and didn't do anything. Well, throughout the night, um, we finally all gathered together on the one floor we were on, and they were using the spirit box or ovulus, mm -hmm. and they were asking questions, and one of the questions they asked is, who moved the mannequin? Because later when Mike and another teammate went up, the mannequin's head was turned looking out the door. Oh, great. And so they said, well, who moved it? And there was some static and white noise, and all of a sudden, it's clear as day, it went, hope did. I stopped dead in the tracks, <laughs> and I turned around and I went, what? Uh -huh. So I was very skeptic of it, but now I'm like, all right, maybe it does have some validity there, and you know, so we've used it a couple other times. It works really well. Like yeah. I said, when so. it works, it works great. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so let me roll back the tape from, from the beginning now. So somebody calls you up and they say, we're having some issues, what do you hope to do for them? Whatever they want us to do, we'll, we'll try to do but what they want. What can you do for them? Let me ask the question. So what's your menu? What, do you, what can well, you do for people? Usually when they call, they want to know, first no. of all, is there activity at my house or am I going crazy? Okay, so they um, want evidence of yeah, some Yeah, they want evidence that this is Who really is. happening. Okay. Um, you know, so we just usually go to validate what it is they're thinking, feeling, sensing, hearing, And you're using your seeing, tools of the trade here. Use our tools. Um, we pray. I don't. I pray a lot before I go into it. I pray I a lot when I'm there mm -hmm. to help, you know, Protect lead yourself. it. Well, yeah, but help also lead mm -hmm. the energies that we're connecting with to where they need to go. Um, <laughs> I also do say you cannot come home with me either. Yeah, I make it a plan that <laughs> you, you can't come home with me. You need to stay here. You know, and sometimes the people will stay there, you know, with us at night so they can be there. And then one day I says, you can't come home. You have to stay here. The lady looks at me like, <laughs> oh, I thought you were taking it with when you left, you know. But, uh, you know. Uh, all right. So, but, all right. So, when you leave, that spirit's still there? It better stays right there. Yeah, it needs to stay there. Well, it depends on what the person wants to do. We can call a minister and have someone come in. We can sage the house. A lot of times... Um, the one person we, a couple of us went to, you know, she was fine with saging her house and, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of times from what I've experienced or just talking to people in general, they don't per se want it to leave. They just want validation that, again, okay. I'm not going crazy. There is something right. here. See, well, we'll investigate and we'll do all that and then we'll contact the client back within, you know, a week to 10 days and then sit down with them and explain to them what's going on. And then there at that initial meeting, we'll be saying, okay, here's what we caught. Now, what would you like to do? Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, they'll say, well, you know, I don't want it to go. I just wanted to know what it was and this okay, and that, you know. Curiosity too but if you can, if they do want it gone, then, you know, I mean, just like go in there and cast it out, you know. I do have a buddy. His name, um, he goes by the Paranormal Pastor. Okay. He's out in Erie. Mm -hmm. I've heard of him. Um, Robert Schwartz. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very good guy. And um, he... Uh, he said, if I ever got into a situation where somebody needed something like that, I'd give him a call, and he would be more than happy to give his you know, services. So, yes, I can have that done. Okay, and speaking it. of call, we're down like 30 seconds here. Yeah, yeah. A number they can call, because they can, folks can see this on the TV, but they can't on the radio. So give us a phone number if someone's interested in contact. All right, it's 716-708-5833. Uh, okay, and that would be right to you, Mike? That would be right to me, yep. Okay, Faith, last words that you want to share with people? Faith? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Faith, hope, and charity. That's okay. Um, oh, my we God. I kept saying to <laughs> I'm, I'm channeling something here. I don't know. I don't know where I came from. Stop, stop, stop. Hope. Oh, I'm sorry. We also have a website that they can go to, um, jamestownparanormalinvestigators.com, and they can fill out a form to get in touch with 
with one of us too and we'll get back to them so okay mike last words no i'm just uh like us on facebook and keep checking in see what we're doing okay so, really so if they stuff. have an issue they're not crazy contact you contact us you'll give them your as much help as you can Absolutely. okay folks you've been watching uh the jamestown paranormal investigators with me hope hill <laughs> not faithful she's the singer yeah. and mike valero uh we're gonna be here next week once again so Visit us next Saturday, 9 o'clock. And again, you can check us out on uh, YouTube and Facebook and all that good stuff. Have a wonderful weekend. It looks like it's a really nice day out there. Take care. Bye now.